If you've been watching CSX over the past two years, you are bound to have seen lots of these wide cabs from General Electric. No question about it, these 4,000 horsepower petroelectric dynamos have won the collective hearts of CSX's top brass. So popular are the GE 40-8 CWs with the folks at CSX that more than 300 have been ordered with an aggregate value approaching half a billion dollars. We spent parts of two days in May 1993 around these three purplish Prometheons and more often than any other comment, we heard bystanders and railroaders alike praising the paint scheme. <laughs> Unquestionably, the SD70Ms look sharp and they have a monstrous appearance. <laughs> as far as I know, that M may just stand for monstrous. Now, I'm not sure if it's the Chianti color, or the macho design, or if they simply built it bigger, but these babies have an enormous presence. They appear huge and are more imposing than the plain SD70 low hood variety. Oh, man, how he's moving the train, whether or not he's loading, how fast he's going, what's his brake pipe pressure, how much fuel does he have, is his brake properly set up as a control unit. Mind. This particular unit is set up in the lead, so is able to determine uh, the amount of dynamic braking effort he has. Also, his from his console, he has a, an area where he can work. Uh, there's controls for the horn and the bell, lead truck sanding, air brake, throttle, and power, and dynamic brake and reversal. The mighty 611 puts on an outstanding show wherever it goes, and that is especially true when it travels to rare mileage territory. Not only is that cultish group of rare mileage collectors present, but of course so are the rail fans. Those who follow the 611 here, there, and everywhere, and those who come out just for the special runs like this one. This is the old Norfolk and Western Dry Fork branch. At maybe $500 a pop, not exactly the sport of kings, these little four-wheel X-Track inspection vehicles are the latest and greatest railroad collectible. Yes, sir, you too can see the world at 29 deafening miles per hour. That is, you can see it, at least see it honestly, if some rail baron will let you put your midget racer on his rails. As you probably know, you just can't plop down your rebuilt speeder on any old stretch of high iron, abandoned or otherwise. Maybe not quite so fast as the X2000 or so luxurious as the ice train, the Virginia Railway Express is up and running. It's a train for today. The VRE, while still fairly new, is a sizzling piece of passenger rail transportation serving northern Virginia commuters. Ain't technology wonderful? <laughs> Wheel sets that turn corners, airline technology and diesel cabs. Not surprisingly, EMD holds out AC traction motors as the biggest and best of all the radical changes evident in the SD60 Mac. If you haven't got AC power between your wheels, you ain't got nothing. And they may well be right, probably are. AC traction motors afford operators the luxury of reduced upkeep costs and at the same time, greater tractive effort. Downtimes will be fewer and maintenance costs reduced because AC motors have no wearing parts. That mercuric silver blur you just witnessed is the newest favorite son in Amtrak's genealogical continuum to produce the best in mainline passenger propulsion. Like any proud parent, Amtrak has chosen a variety of public occasions to show off its newest Petro power, but all the while, the tracks or back boys are claiming a distant ancestry, a twice removed cousin at best to any high iron freight horsepower named GE.
sometimes the best laid plans leave out the most obvious impediments, <laughs> such as this rather unavoidable tank car. These pikers gave out after the first mile and a half, and what's a motor car outing if you can't get out of the siding? Not all that original of an idea, but with proper permission, these rubber-tired four-wheel and switchers made quick work of our mainline inhibitor, and today's fleet of steel-wheel midget racers soon were underway. A uh, jinx on the 611? It all began right here in the fall of 1990. This train on a circle excursion for the Piedmont Carolinas NRHS was bound for Winston-Salem. Never before had a J been to Winston and today would be that great day. Not long thereafter, I joined my train testing family at Washington's Union Station for a couple of faster than normal high-speed rides on the Northeast Corridor. The first trip was on the X2000 and in no time we were clear of the Washington Terminal area. As the X2000 eased past 100 miles per hour, the most incredible thing was what we did not notice. Until my mother mentioned it, the absolute smoothness and comfort inherent in this train set was complete to the point of being inconspicuous. As with the SD70, the radial trucks on the X2000 take you around curves instead of laterally bouncing through the curves. In fact, you have to make a visual outside reference to tell if you are even in a curve. While the radial trucks provide both speed and comfort benefits, it is the comfort-only tilting mechanism that takes the thrill right out of a curve. <laughs> I was shooting curves out the cab window and noticed the angle of my picture in reference to the ground. I believed I might be subconsciously tilting the camera more than the train was tilting, so I zoomed back in order to stay square with the front window frame. To my surprise, I found that I had not been exaggerating, that in fact this train, when it exceeds 45 miles per hour and takes a turn, really tilts a lot. The comfort factor to a passenger is that it keeps the force of gravity nearly straight down through your body as you go around curves. Typical centrifugal side forces are virtually non-existent. 